home. We can't have this oh. every night. Oh, what's that dream? I can't stop dreaming. It isn't fair. It isn't fair. I, I don't belong here. I didn't do anything. But I'm here. He still won't leave me alone, not even in my sleep. Oh, there, you see, Gordon. That's the way it is every night. We can't seem to That's do it. That's enough, Matron. We're releasing Mary Blake. What did you say? You're free, Miss Blake. The nightmare is over. Come with me and I'll tell you what has happened. seems to be a limit to bitterness, Warden. I, I find that what I feel now is not a release from injustice, but a release from fear. I know that he can never reach me again, even in my dreams. How can I be so sure of that? Well, it's another of the things that can't be accounted for rationally about this case. It leads one to wonder if some, oh, some metaphysical force wasn't put to work in place of the erring machinery of justice. Miss Blake, when you blinded Dr. Martin, you limited his vision to mental images. And over the period of time that has lapsed since the day you received sentence, it seems the doctor's mind would not free him from one particular visual experience. He, too, suffered from a recurring dream, which, due to his impairment, was inflicted upon his waking as well as sleeping hours. The dream? Did, did he describe it? Oh, he did, in detail. It seemed that there was... entered a narrow corridor. With my hands, I felt that the walls were of a thick, impregnable cement. The tap of my cane produced an echo that told me the corridor was one of interminable winding lengths. I did not want to enter nor walk through it, yet it seemed that I was forced to, and the walking, walking, to see a single light from a window or an open door to know that there was somewhere an end to the blackness. But there was no light and no end. I wanted to turn back, but there was no turning back and no end to my walking. And although I had the feeling of being alone in this place, I knew that I was not alone and never would be. And it was worse than being alone. For though I could not see her, and though she did not touch nor speak to me, I knew she was there. And for me, she would always be there. Mary Blake, my accuser. For she is the innocent, and I am the guilty. And for the innocent, there is always a freedom. And for the guilty, there is never an escape. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Miss Joan Bennett. Tonight's suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Led Bluskin. Statement of Mary Blake is an original play written for radio by Shirley Gordon. Miss Joan Bennett will soon be seen in the MGM production, Father of the Bride. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Claire Trevor and Charles Boyer. Don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring John Lund.